Are you wondering how you can create a sports jersey logo in Illustrator? If your answer is yes, then you're in the right place. Hi there everyone, my name is Andre Marius, I've been working in Illustrator for over 10 years and in this Embattled Task Plus tutorial I'll put my experience to use as I'll show you step by step how you can create the sports jersey logo using Adobe Illustrator. To complete this tutorial you'll need this Norwell font from Envato Elements, so make sure to check out Envato Elements where with a simple subscription you can get unlimited access to millions of creative digital assets such as music, graphics, photos, fonts and many more. You can subscribe right now with the link in the description. Let's move to Illustrator to create a new document. Select pixels from this drop down menu. Set the width to 850 and the height to 600 pixels. Make sure that the color mode is set to RGB and the resolution to 72 pixels per inch. And then you can click this button to create your new document. Press Ctrl and minus to zoom out a bit. And before we start the work on the design, let's open all the panels that will be used throughout this tutorial. All you have to do is go to window in the menu bar. First of all, make sure that the control panel is active and then open all the panels that have this check mark. Once you're done, go to view and show grid to enable the grid. Again, view and snap to grid to enable the snap to grid feature. And for your design, you'll need a grid line every 5 pixels. So go to edit, preferences, guides and grid. Enter 5 in this grid line every box. Click OK to apply the change. And for the beginning, let's select the ellipsal from the toolbar. Remove the stroke color. Double click the fill color and replace it with 26, 26 and 52. Click on your artboard to create a 270 by 160 pixels shape. Move to the control panel. Make sure that the alignment is set to artboard and then click these two buttons to easily move your shape in the center of the artboard. Press Ctrl and plus to zoom in on this shape. Click this new swatch button to save the current fill color as you'll need this color later. And then switch to the anchor point tool and focus for the beginning on this point. Click and drag it 30 pixels down. Keep in mind that you can have a look inside the info panel to know exactly when you get to 30 pixels. Move to this other anchor point and this time drag the handles 30 pixels up. And then switch to the selection tool to select your entire shape. Press Ctrl C and then Ctrl F to add a copy in front. You can open your layer from the layers panel to notice this copy. Turn up the visibility of this shape as you'll need it later. And reselect the ellipse tool from your toolbar to create a 270 by 120 pixels shape. Press Shift and X to swap the fill and stroke color settings. Select the stroke and let's replace the color with this orange. Increase the stroke weight to 4 points. And then click again these two buttons to move your shape in the center of the artboard. Having this orange pad selected, press Ctrl C and then Ctrl F to add a copy in front. Replace this orange stroke with a yellow one. Switch to the direct selection tool and go to object, pad and add anchor points. Let's repeat this move. And then select just this point and press Ctrl X to cut this pad. Press the delete key to remove the remaining yellow pad and then press Ctrl and F to paste the path that you've cut. Now select the rectangle tool and use it to create a 5 by 15 pixels shape. Press Shift and X to swap the fill and stroke color settings. Press the V hotkey to quickly select the selection tool. Hold down the Alt key and drag a copy of this shape somewhat like this. Hold down the Shift key to select both of these shapes. Select the blend tool from your toolbar. Click this shape and then this one. Double click the blend tool to edit your blend. Select specified steps from this drop down menu. Set this value to 8 and click OK to apply the changes. Press again the V hotkey to reselect the selection tool. Select this blend along with your yellow pad and go to object, blend and replace spine. 
to move your blend along the yellow path. When you're done, reselect the ellipse tool and use it to create a 140 by 450 pixels shape. Let's center this new shape. Press Shift and X to swap the fill and stroke color settings. Increase the stroke weight to 20 points. You can press Ctrl and minus to zoom out a bit so you can see all of these shapes. Press again that V hotkey to activate the selection tool. Select all your shapes, hold down the shift key and click this darker shape to remove it from your selection and then go to object and expand to expand all your selected shapes. Unite this group of shapes using this button, select this new shape along with the darker one and click the minus front button from the pathfinder panel and now you need to turn this group of shapes into a compound path. You can do this either by pressing Ctrl and 8 or by going to Object, Compact Path and Make. Now move to the Layers panel to turn back on the visibility of this shape. Select it, replace the fill color with white and then go to Effect, Path and Offset Path. Set the offset to 10 pixels, click OK to apply this effect. And let's continue with the rectangle tool, which we'll use to create the background. Again, click on your artboard to create an 860 by 610 pixels shape. Fill this new shape with 255, 182, and 19. Remember to center it. Press Ctrl, Shift, and the left square bracket key to move this shape in the background and then continue with the type tool. Just click on your artboard and focus on the control panel to set the settings for the text that you're about to add. Click this character button to open the character flyout panel. Select that Norwell font, which you got from Envato Elements. Increase the font size to 70 and the tracking to 140. Press enter and let's type in campus. Press the escape key to easily switch to the selection tool. Let's remove the current fill color and add a new fill using this button. Keep this new fill selected and set the color to white. And then select the stroke, apply your saved color. Increase the stroke weight to two points and go to effect, path and offset path. Set the offset to minus one and click OK. Return to the appearance panel and add a second stroke for your text using this button. Increase the stroke weight of this new stroke to 4 points and go again to Effect, Path and Offset Path. This time set the offset to 4 pixels. Click OK to apply this new effect. Move to the Layers panel to reselect this white shape. Add a new fill and set the color to red. Move this red fill below the white one, keep it selected and go to Effect, Path and Offset Path. Increase the offset to 28 and click OK to apply the effect. This red fill won't be part of your final design. We'll just use it as a reference to perfectly align the text with the logo. So select your text. Focus on the appearance panel and make sure that your entire text is selected. And then go to Effect, Warp and Arc. Check this horizontal box, set the band to 46% and then click OK to apply this band for your text. Let's align it with this red fill. Keep in mind that you can disable the snap to grid and then you can use the arrow buttons to better align your text somewhat like this. When you're done, hold down the Alt key and drag a copy of your text below the logo. Double click this new text and replace it with leak. Press the escape key, open the warp effect that's already applied and set the band to minus 46%. Again, let's move the text and align it with this red fill. And then you can reselect this white shape and remove the red fill. With this final touch, your design is complete.
Now that you've got your design, you might want to check out how it would look once it's printed. Using a mockup from Placeit, you can easily achieve this. All you have to do is upload your design, crop it so it fits your mockup, place it as you wish, and that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to hit that like button as it lets me know that I did a good job. Subscribe if you aren't already and don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. I'm Andre Marius and I'll see you in the next video.